Kevin Raver at Photo PXL and Rock Hopper Workshops, and I'm in Antarctica tonight. I've been very privileged to have Art Wolf as uh, an instructor with me, along with Michael Durr. Art and I have traveled around the world doing a number of workshops together. He motivates me every time I see his pictures. He motivates me every time I'm with him. We have a lot of laughs together. It's really nice to travel with somebody that's genuinely happy with sharing his knowledge, but he loves taking pictures. He loves looking at pictures, and that's a great thing, as do I. I can't wait to get back to my room, upload images, and look at them on the computer. And we photographed almost every corner of the world together. We're taking about 30 people with us, and highlighting the land that we both love. You know, Antarctica is a unique place. It's one of the few places where a population of people haven't really occupied. Yeah, there's a few research stations, but it's so hostile and in a beautiful way, austere, that no population lives down here. And that's in fact the draw. You know, I want to fulfill what people expect of an instructor. So I'm pointing out things to the attendees on this uh, great adventure, but I'm also working on various projects, one of which is called Primordial. It's beauty in nature. It's everything from the auroras to lava exploding out of a mountain. And here in Antarctica, it's just the austere, rugged landscape. I'm also working on a book called Wild Lives that will come out in a couple of years. And it's a look at international wildlife in the age of man. Tourism is increasing in the Antarctic. And with that then comes more restrictions. Having said that, people that come down here won't even feel that because they're put in close proximity to penguins and seals. Certainly we're in zodiacs circling icebergs at a safe distance. We found some amazing ice in Plano Bay. Plano Bay is a place where icebergs go to die. It's called the Iceberg Graveyard. Our trip through the Lamar Channel was a little foggy and lousy weather, snowing and so forth. You've got to be prepared in Antarctica because you're going to have great days and then you're going to have gray days. This is a gray day. You notice I don't have a camera today, but I'm at the very forefront of the ship, the bow. I've done some photography of the ice flows and the seals, but right now I'm gonna kind of do what's called contemplation and watch the world go by. And speaking of snow, what's really been incredible on this trip and very different is the fact that we're on Deception Island right now, and I've been on this island and it's been covered with snow. And we were in Nico Harbor the other day and it was usually covered with snow. But according to the expedition team, which we've had discussions with, things are changing down here. Things are getting warmer. When it used to snow, it's now raining. Uh, the conditions are changing. Yes, you know, there is an environmental change happening and it's happening probably faster here in Antarctica than it is anywhere else. Generally, this is all deep, deep snow. So it's kind of interesting to see how climate change in Antarctica is really pronounced as we are walking on bare rock. I think we get a measure of the speed of climate change basically by looking at how fast glaciers are receding in North America's Arctic, but also here in Antarctica. Suddenly we have satellite photos of icebergs the size of states breaking off from the Weddell Sea ice shelf or the uh, Ross ice shelf. And these are really indications of what's happening with our climate. Sure, there's hot days in North America and cold days, but down here, it's unequivocal that climate is changing and it's a great measure. So these are hot spots. These are hot spots for the news and for people's awareness. As rugged and wild as this land is, it's also extraordinarily fragile. There's millions of penguins that rely on the pristine waters and the environment for survival. We leave no trace when we leave a place other than, of course, tracks in the ice that quickly melt out. And this group of instructors and staff are really enabling us to move without harm. These people are basically now the stewards of this area and what a wonderful job they're doing. There are a group of people that are really, that care passionately 
about Antarctica and want to want it to be there for future generations to see the same very pristine, untouched world that it, it is today. You got to be here to to experience it. It's not just all cold. It's not just one thing, but the over experience. Even the effort we have to go through every time we go out in terms of putting on the multiple layers of clothes and the overboots and being tagged in and out so the, the crew can keep track of our whereabouts, the care they take for the environment in terms of where we track. You don't need to be a photographer. As a matter of fact, they we're often um, admonished for spending so much time with our cameras that we don't spend enough time letting it soak in. And that's something you can't experience until you're here. Everybody, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for being part of the Rockhopper Workshop. Thanks for being a member and a reader of PhotoPXL, where we're trying every day to enhance your vision.